out with three cups of warm water. Now this is like, it's not hot, it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast, um, but if it's not warm enough, it will not activate anything. So I've got three cups of um, water here. Don't worry too much about the measurements. This is just to kind of give an idea of what, um, how the ingredients are going in and, and what I'm doing. Um, and I'll have the recipe underneath, so don't worry about all the particulars. We've got three cups of warm water. Um, and then I'm going to add um, the oil and the sweetener, which I use honey. Now here's a tip. Um, always put in your oil first. And that's mainly just because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, if you, you use the same amount of oil and honey, so if you use the oil first, it kind of coats the measuring cup. So then when you go to take your honey out, instead of having the, to dig it out, you know how honey can be sticky. This way, it should just pour right out. Because the oil kind of acts as a barrier in between the honey and the measuring cup. There we go. Help the last bit out. It's clean. Okay, so we've got the water, honey, and oil. Um, we're going to put in the flour next. I kind of pre-measured out. Um, I'm only going to put in half of the flour to start with. And now the yeast. Okay, so I have all the ingredients except for the salt. And I'm not going to add the salt in yet. That will come. So right now it's not going to be real thick or real thin. You're basically just kind of getting the base in there. Okay, so I just got this mix here. You can see it's soft. Um, this is where I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And mix that in. Before I add the salt, sometimes what I like to do is just kind of cover it, and they call it a sponge. Um, you just cover it, let it sit there, and it'll kind of bubble up and rise. And that will count as the first rise, so it doesn't take us long. Um, 10, 15 minutes is is enough and that gives it more of a bread taste um, that we all love so much. That's everything except for the rest of the flour. Um, normally what I do is I have a Bosch mixer and what that is it's just a pretty heavy duty mixer and um, it does all the kneading for me so I don't even have to do all of this stuff that I'm doing by hand. But since I know that most of you probably don't have that, I'm just going to show you how to do it by hand. Now, if you happen to have a mixer, what's great about that is, well, number one, it's easier on your arms. <laughs> but the other thing is that, you know, I really don't measure my flour. I go by the appearance of the dough. And that way, um, even if I use different flours, some are more dense heavier than others. Um, so if you always just use a set amount, you know, you'll end up with bread that's either too heavy or, or maybe too doughy. Um, whereas if you kind of get used to what the dough is supposed to look like or feel like, then you can experiment with different ingredients. Now that I've got quite a firm dough, I'm going to transfer it to the table to mix into the rest. Um, so you want to create a work surface here, just add some flour, or it will stick. It's still pretty doughy, so I know I, I need to add quite a bit more flour, but I need to have also more space to work it in. Well, this is the fun part. <laughs> so basically what I'm doing is just kind of taking it and folding it over on itself. And when I see that it, it may be starting to stick, I just start adding more flour. 
And then when you think you've got enough flour, basically when it's not sticking a whole lot, you don't need to add any more, but you do need to continue working it. And the reason that is, is basically you're just um, working up that great gluten in the bread because um, you want it to be able to stretch. So it's soft, it's pliable, but yet the stickiness has kind of gone out of it, which is exactly what we're looking for. Just keep your work surface floured. Try not to add too much flour just because then you'll end up with a loaf that's too heavy. So this part, yeah, it's work, but it's also kind of fun. It's like digging in a garden or something. We were made to put our fingers in dirt and dough. Now you'll see I'm using a stone, not a bread pan. You can use a bread pan if you want. And I can show you even how to make a loaf. Um, but you know what? It, I kind of like this better. Number one, it's way easier. Number two, it looks like those rustic, really cool loaves you see in like <laughs> the French little cafes. What I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of olive oil on the stones just to prevent the dough from sticking. You see how it's just stretching? Um, that's, that's what happens when the gluten starts to, to build up. Now if you pulled it and it just um, snapped, you probably you may have added too much flour, and that's hard to go back, but you may just need to knead it some more um, and develop that gluten a little bit more. All right, so since I'm going to make about two loaves, this will be big loaves. You can make three if you'd like. Um, now, if you were going to do a traditional loaf, you know, in a bread, the rectangular bread pans. Um, you would just kind of spread it out more into this sort of a rectangle shape, longer. Um, and what I do is kind of fold it over like this, fold this over, fold this over, and then you put all those folds in the bottom. And there you go, you put it in the bread pan like that. Make sure your bread pan is really greased well. Um, I use an all vegetable shortening, which is a little bit healthier. That seems to work a little bit better than the olive oil or butter, because um, you don't want your bread to stick to your pan. Um, so that would work for that. For me, for this, um, I just like the round ones. Um, again, this would be the time if you want to kind of make it fancier on your bread, on your baking sheet, to just put like I said, either cornmeal, oatmeal, um, millet, which is kind of a fun thing. Um, these are a little bit warm. I took them out of the oven. Um, not hot. I, could, I can touch them with my bare hand. But just warm. That will kind of help since it is a cooler day. Um, and that yeast really likes that warmth for a good rise. Okay, so I have my two loaves here. Now is when you have to wait. They do need to rise at least once. Um, so they will hopefully be, my oven's hot, um, not quite double, but pretty close. Um, so like I said, they'll be a good size loaf. I'm gonna cover them. This just helps to uh, keep the dough soft and to keep the warmth there, any draft off of them um, to help them rise better. So I'm gonna wait um, probably a half hour. Um, just keep checking them. Don't um, mess with them. <laughs> don't bump them, don't be too curious. Just leave them be. You can kind of even tell under your tea towel um, if they've been there long enough. So 
they look about right. Not quite double, but as you can see, quite a bit bigger. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put them in now. Um, one of the mistakes I used to make right at the beginning was um, waiting too long. And um, I mean, I, I thought, okay, they really have to be double. And I would let them over rise. And then when I put them in the oven, they would, and they would just fall. It's so disappointing when you see that happen. So um, now I just, they look big enough. I put them in. Um, you want to make sure your oven is ready. Um, I've been preheating mine to 350. Um, some people tend to go a little bit warmer um, to even 400. Um, I haven't had luck with that. Um, it depends on your ovens. Every house I've been in, I've had to kind of relearn um, the bread for that oven in that house. Just, just the way it is. Um, but look upon that as kind of a, a, a fun challenge. Um, don't be intimidated by it. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully put these in. Try not to like bang them around too much. Um, you don't want to disturb the rise process. I don't like to put them in together because it kind of prevents the heat from really circulating well. Um, but I also want to get them done quickly and I have the chicken in the other ovens. So.